everyone. My name's Alisa. I'm going to be walking you through a question for the USMLE Step 2 CK. So a previously healthy 25-year-old woman comes to the emergency department with complaints of several episodes of palpitations that became, uh, began a few days ago. The palpitations are intermittent. Each episode lasts 5 to 15 seconds. She feels like her heart is pounding. She thinks her chest feels tight. There's mild dizziness associated with the longer of the episodes. She does admit she's been staying up late to study for those medical school exams. She does not drink alcohol or use drugs. She appears anxious. Her vitals are um, 98.6 Fahrenheit for temperature, 82 per minute for pulse, and blood pressure is 115 over 77. Physical exam is normal, and then the EKG is below. So what do we do? So the first thing we think is, okay, tell me about the patient. The patient is a 25-year-old woman. That's pretty young. Um, and these palpitations began a few days ago, so that's not very often. We know basically she's never had this problem before. Um, they're intermittent. They last 5 to 15 seconds. Um, she thinks her heart is pounding, classic with palpitations. She does have some dizziness associated with the longer episodes, which makes you think that blood isn't getting out of the ventricle. Um, and most importantly in this question stem is that she's been studying up really late um, to study. She's been staying up late to study. Um, so sleep deprivation, that's a little bit of a hint. Um, no alcohol, no drug use, awesome. She also appears anxious, um, but otherwise her vitals are within normal limits. All of these numbers are normal for a 25 year old. Um, so let's look at the EKG, that's next. So you see that it's normal sinus rhythm, but then suddenly there are these really interesting um, complexes. And normally uh, you don't see these on an EKG. So what can they be? Uh, well, they're called monomorphic QRS complexes and they can come in singlets, doublets, or triplets. Um, those are called either PVCs or PVBs, premature ventricular contractions or ventricular premature beats, whatever you want to call them, it's the same thing. Um, so let's look at our answer choices. Um, first is echocardiography. Okay, well, you know, this is a 25 year old woman. It's the first time she's ever had this. These episodes are uncomfortable, but do they necessarily warrant an investigation? Maybe, maybe not. Um, I think the best thing to do before crossing any option choices is to see what the other options are because sometimes uh, something like this might be your best option. Uh, the next option is a beta blocker. A beta blocker is definitely used for certain arrhythmias and it is a treatment for premature ventricular contractions that are totally um, unmanageable by lifestyle changes and by uh, kind of just doing what you can to minimize them or ignoring them because sometimes a lot of people have premature ventricular contractions and they're ignorable. They don't even notice them. Um, but in terms of uh, like stressful situations, high caffeine intake, uh, dehydration, premature ventricular contractions can become very noticeable, which may be the case of this patient who's studying for her med school exams and is very stressed out. Uh, the next option is cardiac calf ablation, uh, which is an even more extreme answer. See, these are kind of going up in extremity. Um, and that's just kind of the last ditch effort for pretty much any cardiac arrhythmia. And um, you usually choose ablation when you've failed the beta blocker therapy, when you've failed conservative measures. Um, so that pretty much you could cross out right away. Um, the electrical cardioversion is kind of a trick answer because it's actually only used um, for arrhythmias, like acute arrhythmias, like AFib, um, which she's not in. She's in normal sinus rhythm, you see P waves, everything's okay. She just has all these premature ventricular beats. Um, so it's definitely not D either. Pharmacological cardioversion is for something also like AFib, where um, patient comes in acutely, you know, something's wrong, there's palpitations, or they've had a history of this before. But again, you know, she's not an AFib, she's in normal sinus rhythm. Um, so, um, 
yeah, she doesn't need pharmacological cardioversion. So these three are the very, very extreme answers that we can automatically cross out. So let's do that now. Let's strike through this, this, and this. And in your world, you can do that. So it's nice to do here. And the last option is reassurance. Um, UWorld and step two and step one love to put answers um, that the answer to is reassurance because classically, uh, you know, we're trained to be physicians. We want to do something. Sometimes like patients come in, we want to, you know, we want to help them. We want to give them an answer, give them medication, give them a treatment. Sometimes the answer is just, it's okay. Nothing's wrong. You're going to be okay. You know, you're stressed out for exams. This is the first time this has happened. You know, maybe you should try to relax or cut down on the caffeine. Sometimes the answer is that easy. It's reassurance. Um, in this case, uh, you know, 25 year old woman, previously healthy, new onset palpitations, no other history of cardiac issues that we know of. And we would know because the exam would tell you that. But essentially the answer is reassurance. So um, here's our answer. And you can essentially now cross off uh, echocardiography and beta blocker because you know your answer is reassurance. Um, however, you know, if she keeps coming back with these episodes and they're getting more and more severe, then you would want to do an echo because you want to rule out structural heart disease. That's kind of the next step for people with recurrent severe PVCs. Um, and regardless of what the echo comes back with, you would you can offer them a beta blocker, which helps them with the severity of their symptoms. But actually you would do these almost simultaneously. So that's another thing to think about. And then I have um, some explanations in this video that you can pause and read right now. Um, but otherwise I just wanted to show the very different kinds of uh, ventricular premature beats that can occur that you will see on an EKG. Most classically, you will see something like this or something like this. Um, you might see something like this or like this. These are a little bit more subtle, but this is the one that's like extremely classic. So it's good for you to memorize these and kind of know the treatment for them. Um, and then these are the answers, you know, echo, beta blockers, cardiac ablation, electrical cardioversion, pharmacological cardioversion, and then reassurance, um, which is the answer. So yeah, I hope to you enjoy this video. I hope it was helpful and we'll see you next week.